this is Goddess of Science Physics and I'm Mrs. Bolkin and today we're going to do some acceleration and free body diagram exemplars. Um, if you watched my video before on how to draw free body diagrams, that was just kind of groundwork for what we're going to do today. Um, free body diagram, just to review, is a really simple diagram of something as simple as a square that has um, that represents an object and it shows all the forces on the object so our first one is probably pretty simple um, so we have a force of gravity of 10 and then we have a force of friction which is also 10 and if I wasn't putting the numbers in there I would do one of these little deals where I could show that those are exactly equal to each other well force net is the force of gravity um, plus the force of friction, in this case, air resistance. So let's put those numbers in there. So we have 10, and because the force of friction is in the opposite direction, that would be a negative 10 for the force of friction. So 10 minus 10 is equal to zero. So there's no net force on this object, as you can see from the arrows in opposite directions and equal size. So if there's no net force on this object, there must be no acceleration. And mass, this is the easiest one of them all. It doesn't matter what you put in there. You could put 172.35 kilograms if you wanted. Any number that you want in there, as long as you put a number, doesn't really matter because the force is a balance and the object is not accelerating. So this was kind of a bit of a freebie for you guys. All right, the second one is a little bit more difficult. Um, so we have, let's see here, we have the force of friction, we have the force of gravity, and since there's an acceleration, that, that means that there must be a net force. Let's figure out what that net force is. There's a couple of different ways to approach this problem, but probably the one that I'm gonna use is calculate the net force first, because we know that the net force equals the mass, which we have, times the acceleration, the net acceleration. So that means we have 150 times 7.8. And when you do the math out on that, you end up with 1170, 1170 newtons. Um, and that's since the acceleration, the direction on the acceleration is down, the direction on the net force has to be down as well. Because remember, Newton's second said that when the net force acts, the acceleration has to be in the same direction as the net force. Okay, so we know what the net force is. Now we gotta figure out what the force due to gravity is. And there's a couple of ways that you can approach that. You can just do a simple force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration of gravity because we do have the mass and we know what the acceleration due to gravity is. Now, you got to be a little careful here because this is not the acceleration due to gravity. Um, the acceleration due to gravity, you know, is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's do it. That way seems to be the easiest way to do it. So we're going to do force of gravity equals 150 times 9.81. And that gives you a big honking number of 1471.5 newtons. And what direction is the force of gravity? Well, that's down. Now, another way that you could have figured out what the force of gravity is, is you could have used F net equals the force due to gravity plus the force of friction. So you knew that you calculated F net is 1170 equals the force of gravity, which is what we're looking for, plus, and because it's going opposite the force of gravity, it's a negative 301.5. And when you calculate that out, you're gonna add plus 301.5 to both sides, 01.5, and guess what you get? You get 1471.5. Um, so 
Newton. So you get the same thing, it's just two different ways of getting it, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, my personal favorite, if you're given the mass and you know the acceleration to gravity, calculate that thing using that. This seems a little bit more complex. Okay, let me slide my paper up here a little bit so we can get to the next set of problems. i got to move the camera too, so I might be rocking your world here a wee bit. Okay, so let's look at this next one. We know that the force of gravity and the support force is going to are exactly the same. So all of the force is going to be the applied force. So the net force is going to be 4 newtons left. Now, um, we need to figure out what the acceleration is, but before we do that, we need to figure out what the mass is. And the thing that we're going to use to figure out the mass is this force due to gravity, because we know force due to gravity is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So let's plug in, and we know that the acceleration due to gravity is always 9.81 meters per second squared. Awesome. Um, so let's plug in here. So we know 15 equals the mass which is what we're looking for, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81. We're going to divide both sides by 9.81 to get rid of that. So that ends up being mass equals 1.53 kilograms. So now you can put that into F net equals the mass times the acceleration, which is what we're looking for, the net acceleration. So we got 4 equals 1.53 times the acceleration. Divide both sides by 1.53. And the acceleration ends up being 2.61 meters per second squared. And then now let's think about the direction acceleration is a vector quantity, so we got to be able to say which direction the acceleration is, and Newton's second law says that it has to be in the same direction as the net force, which happens to be left. Okay, so our last one here, oh my gosh, seems like a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and it doesn't help that I kind of ran over from the previous problem. Well, let's see. Um, we know the mass. Um, we know that the acceleration and the net force is going to be in a right in the rightward fashion. So we also know that there's no acceleration either up or down. So by knowing that, we know that these two things are equal. So the support force has to be 15 newtons as well. Okay. Um, so we're really just looking for the force of friction. Okay. Um, so F net equals the mass times the acceleration. Whoops. I should just write an A there. Sorry about that, guys. So F net equals 0 0.6 times 1.2. And when you do that out, you end up with 0 0.72 newtons. And it's going to be in the same direction as the acceleration, so that's right. Okay, so now that we know what the F net is, we know that a net force is the sum of all the forces equals the force applied plus, whoops, that's an A, not a G, plus the force of friction. So F net is 0 0.72 newtons to the right, and we're going to say that right is going to be the positive direction here, equals 7 plus the force of friction. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. So we get 6.28 newtons, negative 6.28 newtons equals the force of friction. But really, what is that negative telling us? It's telling us not that it's a number less than zero. It's actually telling us that it's the opposite direction from the net force. So force of friction is going to be 
eight newtons and not to the right, it's gonna be to the left. Okay, so that should pretty much take care of most issues that you're gonna have when you're trying to do these free body diagrams and taking them one step further to figure out what the acceleration is gonna be in that particular situation. That's it for this time. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.